Hey friends, today I'm gonna to put the new Devious Machines X6 multiband to the test. The X6 is an incredible tool with some really clever and useful ideas that can help make working with a multiband compressor a creative and fun thing to do. Now, full disclosure, Devious Machines sent this device to me for free, but they won't see this video before it's posted and they have no say in the content that I'm gonna make with it. All right, let's check it out. Okay, so here's X6 and I'm gonna go ahead and put it on an initialized state so we can start with the clean slate. And I've got this really super basic jam I've got going on in Ableton, sounds like this. <laughs> Right, extremely dry sounds, very unexciting. We're gonna use X6 to make this very dull and boring mix sound really fun. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, solo out the drums and take a deeper look at X6. So essentially what a multiband compressor is, is a collection of compressors that are applied to specific bands. In this case, we have four bands, but X6 can go up to, of course, six different bands, which means six different compressors. So the first thing to do with any multiband compression device is to kind of choose what the bands are that you're gonna be working with. So let's go ahead and take a listen to these drums. And the default way that it's got the band split up here, I don't like. What I'd like to do is I'd like to work with the sub of the kick, maybe over here, right? And maybe we'll work with the, uh, the, the punch of the kick and the snare drum. Maybe that'll be this one. Right, that sounds pretty good. Maybe this is our presence here. And maybe this is our brilliance, right? Okay, so now that we've got our band set up on these drums, let's go ahead and take a look at how X6 works and how X6 is different from other multiband compressors. If you start to use any of these knobs down here at the bottom, these actually affect all of the bands at once. So compression, meaning the ratio, and then gain and everything else. Everything else here, attack and release, all of these controls, affect all of the compressors at once. And I think that this is such a good idea. The reason is, is that most of the time when you're doing multi-band compression, you don't have bands doing drastically different things. Usually those bands are doing very similar things. So let's start to work with these different bands all together using these knobs. Now, if I set this compression at noon, uh, nothing's gonna happen until I start to pull the threshold down, right? Because in order for a compressor to work, the signal has to pass the threshold, right? And we have this really useful, you can turn it on and off, but we have this really useful scope that can kind of show us when that threshold's gonna get passed. So let's start to do that. Once you see the audio signal pass the threshold, the compressor will start doing its, its thing. And you'll start to notice something happening. As I pull the threshold down in most compressors, unless the auto gain feature is on on most compressors, the compressor is actually going to get quieter and quieter as I pull down the threshold. Now I can turn this off, right? And now, as I turn the threshold down, you're gonna hear it get quieter. But what makes X6 so cool is that they've implemented some really well thought out and well designed uh, gain compensation features inside of X6. So essentially, if I have this button turned on here, what this is gonna do is it's using uh, some sort of algorithmic um, understanding of the signal that's coming in to try to make it so that the frequency balance that you had prior to the compressor and then the frequency balance post the compressor will sound relatively the same. So check it out. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna turn this on and then we'll AB the compressor. So now it's bypassed with it on. So you can hear that the drums, they sound similar. It doesn't sound like there's a, a, a widely different EQ curve happening to the drums. But you will notice also that it's getting louder. So let me show you something else that's just so great about this compressor. You can go ahead and turn on this level matcher control. And what this will do is it will probably listen to the RMS signal going into the compressor, and then it'll listen to the output stage. And it will actually change the output level to match the uh, input level. So essentially you can AB the compressor and see if it's doing a job that you want it to do. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and play the signal and then I'm gonna turn this uh, control on. So it's analyzing. And that's the number that it calculated for it to sound pretty much the same loudness if I AB the X6. So let's go ahead and listen to it without the compressor. And then with it. Without it. 
and then with it. And so what's being added here is a subtle amount of punch, right? There's, a, there's some punch being added, there's some other things. Now between the multiband gain compensation control and this level matcher, you can get super crazy with your compression settings, and you can always use these two uh, to kind of get back to what the original volume was prior to using the effect and post. So you don't have to worry about it. You can get as crazy as you want here and have a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get nuts. If you hit the high control, it will start the compression at a 20 to one ratio, meaning that you're really gonna smash this audio down. Let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> so we've got this really crazy, super heavy uh, compression going on. Let's go ahead and dig down with the threshold a little bit more. Now, of course, we're keeping the overall uh, sonic signature. We're keeping the overall EQ, if you will, of the original sound, but now we have to level match. So now it's set the level prior to the compression and post the compression at negative 1.3. This isn't always going to work, okay? Let's go ahead and take a listen to this. With the multiband. Sounds like there's a lot of headroom being ate up by like the kick drums punch. But let's go ahead and turn this back up. I feel like it uh, at zero would make a little bit more sense. Without it. So let's make it more crazy. I know we're already getting into some really ridiculous territory, but let's go ahead and turn the attack down. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna slap that audio down and really emphasize the, um, the sustain of the compression. Let's take a listen to this. Now, as you can hear, we have barely any attack to the sound. We have more of just the sustain of the drums. Now, why am I doing this? Because now I can do a thing where I can actually blend the original signal and do some parallel multi-band compression. Let's go ahead and do that. So here's our original without any of the multiband compression. Let's bring it back in a little bit. Now potentially this is the best of both worlds. I have a lot more sustain to the drums. It sounds like uh, you can hear the room of the drums if you will a lot more. And I can go ahead and AB this. Let's go ahead and level match it though. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and AB this. So without it, with it, without it, just really awesome sounds. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the mix back up to 100% and let's maybe dial in a more reasonable compression here. I'll turn the high switch off and let's talk about something else. Um, the I'm gonna open the threshold up a little bit. You actually have these different algorithms here that can yield some different sounds. So punch is a hard knee compressor. So let's say we wanted to add more punch to these drums. Let's take a listen to this. What I can do is I can actually solo each band. Let's work with this frequency band right here. Now you can see that this band is soloed. My attack settings are very low, but maybe I want to open the attack up just for this band right here. Where I feel like most of the uh, the low mid punch of these drums is, I can actually do that. It's a really interesting thing they decided to implement. If I hit solo, you'll notice that the knobs change colors, indicating that now I'm going to be messing with just the attack of this band. And you can hear by turning the attack up of just this band, I'm getting more of that attack sound, right? Let's go ahead and do that also for maybe the mid range. So this would be like the presence. But my super highs, the brilliance, and then my, my subs are being uh, compressed faster. Okay, so if I click on the solo here, you can see that the attack is lower. So if you click on these controls, you can see their differences here. You can see that the attack time is different on these different bands, right? So now let's take a listen to this. Boom, just so much punch here. Let's go ahead and auto match this. There we go, it's probably a more reasonable level there. Without the compressor. With it. Just massive drums, super heavy, super compressed. Sounds really awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the bass. And let's go ahead and take a listen to what we got going on here. Yeah. 
Now to me, I hear just three basic aspects to the sound. I don't really need four bands. Let's go ahead and get rid of this highest band here. And let's work with the sub, we'll work with the mids, and then we'll work with the highs of this sound. So soloing out the sub, I think 100 would work there. Let's listen to the mids. Then we'll work with the top end. Cool, so now we can explore some of the other things that this compressor can do. Let's go ahead and we'll start opening up the compression and we'll bring the threshold down. This is a really useful sound to show what you can really do with a compressor. You can hear that if we really push this down hard, we're getting sounds that are akin to like using like an OTT or something. Of course, there's no upward compression component to this, but you can hear what I'm talking about. We've, we've got a lot of brightness coming through. We've got a lot of mid-range coming through. It just sounds a little bit more balanced across the frequency spectrum, right? Again, so without the multiband with it. And of course we can level match this. I wanna show you something else that's really interesting about this compressor. It's got some really interesting keyboard shortcuts that can really help you kind of dial in these sounds. Let's say that we want some punchy low end, but we, we don't want the highs to have as much attack, okay? Meaning that we want the highs to get compressed faster. What I can do is I can hold shift, and what this will do is, as you can see, as I pull this down, you can see that the lows are getting a faster attack which means that they'll have less attack, and the highs are getting a longer attack, which means that we'll have a more powerful present attack. So what I want to do is the opposite. I actually want the lows to have a, long, a longer attack, and I want the highs to be, a, the attack to be almost instant, right? And this is just by holding shift, okay? So this is really an awesome control here. Uh, so long attack for the lows and a short attack for the highs. Let's take a listen to the difference now. Right, so we have a more punchy bass, okay? So another thing we can do is we can actually affect the threshold. So let's say that I don't want to compress the highs. Let's say I want to compress the highs more and not compress the lows as much. We can do that. I can hold shift and check this out as I pull up. So I don't have as much threshold on the lows as I do on the highs. And the reason that this is an important thing to do is, that be is because there's so much more energy coming from the low end on this sound, right? Awesome, we can do the same thing with gain. So we could, we could think of this as sort of like a crude EQ, right? So maybe I wanna have less lows and more highs. Hold shift. Or maybe the other way. This can really become useful when you have like six bands going at once, right? Okay, awesome, so let's really crank this compression up. Go ahead and uh, gain match. Maybe turn this up a bit. Now, I wanna show you something else. Before on the drums, I used this mix control to blend the original signal in with the compressed signal. So I can do that here as well. Now, when you listen to this, it won't be as easy to hear on this specific example because the bass line is moving around, but there you may introduce some phasing when you do this, especially when you have uh, filters working on the low end of a sound. What can happen is comb filtering can start to enter the process because essentially when you have any style of EQ band or compression band, what will happen is, is that the phase can start to get edited or changed on the wet signal versus the dry signal. And so the way that you can actually defeat this is to go into the compressor and actually turn on linear phase. And when you turn this on, at the cost of adding a little bit of CPU and then of course a little bit of plug-in de uh, delay compensation, you can actually make it so that the original audio lines up perfectly with the processed audio. And, and go ahead and listen to the difference this makes. This is an extremely subtle thing, but if you're listening on headphones, you can tell. especially down on that low end, making sure that the uh, audio is in phase with itself, right? This is a really important thing to include with any multiband compressor, right? 
We'll go ahead and take a look at look ahead time and oversampling here in a moment when we put this multiband on the master. But let's go ahead and finally, maybe I'll just turn down the level of the highs a little bit in this because I just don't need them as much. Okay, so on this last sound, we're gonna fly through this a little bit faster. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the multiband and let's take a listen to what this sounds like. We can hear there's all these really interesting, like different amounts of reverb in the background, but it's kind of quiet in the background. What I'd like to do is I'd like to bring those reverbs and that sustain out using this compressor. Let's go ahead and turn it on. And this is on just the default setting right now. Let's go ahead and mess with this a bit. Now, obviously we don't need any of the subs, so I could actually use this multiband compressor to just turn, use, use it as a shelving EQ to kind of turn the subs down a bit. Let's take a listen to this band though. So I'm using this to kind of isolate the fundamental. This will be like the mid range of the sound. And here's our top end. All right, so now that I've got my band set up, let's start working with the compression. Let's move it over to the crunch style. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and, and compress this a bit. And you can hear this compressor is really doing an awesome job of bringing that the background uh, sustain and those reverbs into the sound. I really like the way it sounds. So without it, with it. Okay, sweet. So now that we've got that dialed in, let's go ahead and map the Q key to the on switch of each one of these X6s. And now I can AB the mix with and without this effect. So here's without it. Here's with it. Without it. And you can hear just a fun, punchy, really, really cool mix that's coming out here. But let's take it a step further and let's add an X6 multiband to the master. Okay, so on the master, we're gonna think about this a little bit differently. The master, if you're doing multiband compression on a master track, you, you wanna be a little bit more subtle with what you're doing, okay? So let's go ahead and start dialing this in. And what I'd like to do is just, of course, start with an initialized preset. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working on the bands. Go with about 90 hertz on the lows. Let's take a listen to the mids. Okay, let's listen to the high mids. And then the brightness. Okay, so now that we've got our bands dialed in, let's, let's talk about this in a little bit different of a fashion. When I'm doing multiband compression on the master, I want to be careful of a couple things. Maybe I want to use this to increase loudness. And so if I want to do that, maybe I'd, I'd, I need to turn the attack down uh, significantly so that we're just catching the peaks, okay? So we could do something like that where we're working on loudness. So I'm going to turn the attack all the way down. And I'm going to start turning the threshold down so we dig into the signal. And right now the compression ratio is one to one because it's all the way down, right? So as I increase this, and so you can hear we're adding a lot of sustain to the sound. So now that we've done this, this is a really great opportunity to listen to the different algorithms that come with uh, X6. Let's take a listen again to Smooth, and I'm gonna switch it over to Crunch, and then I'll switch it over to Punch, and you'll hear kind of the differences that these make. You can hear how pleasing the, uh, the the distortion and the saturation that crunch adds to the mix. You can hear how pleasing that is. And maybe uh, it's a shock going from this smooth, but once you listen to crunch for a while, your ears get normalized to it, and it actually starts to make the mix sound a little bit sweeter. I really like the way that this sounds now. And in 
terms of loudness, let's talk about that too. If, if you take a look at the master uh, volume meter in Ableton, you can see that switching between these two modes, uh, the crunch actually controls the transients a little bit better and this will help you get a louder mix. So let's listen with smooth and you can see our volume output. And watch what happens when I switch to crunch. That saturation allows us to have a similar volume, but with less peak level, right? That's of course the, the benefit of any saturation. I really like the way that sounds. Now let's go ahead and go from smooth and switch over to punch. Now, I don't like the punch as much for uh, being on the master track. Um, it's just it's just a lot. It, it adds a, kind of a spittiness to the mix. I could, of course, work with the compressor settings and maybe make it a little bit more acceptable, but I gotta say, on this mix, I really like the way that the crunch kind of sounds, okay? Okay, so let's go into the options, and I'm gonna go ahead and look at oversampling, like I said. And what's nice about this is that if you're in the crunch mode and you're making um, harmonics with uh, the X6, this will help uh, make it so that there's no like aliasing. And so let's take a listen to the difference that's made when we go uh, 2X and 4X here. <laughs> it's funny, I actually like the aliasing uh, distortion that's being made in this specific mix. But for the most part, if you're working on, a, you're trying to get like a clean master, it would probably make sense to use some oversampling here. Let's talk about look ahead time, but I'd like to do that in just the drum track. So I'm gonna get out of this and let's go ahead and take a listen to just the drum track. And we're gonna work on listening to this uh, look ahead time. So essentially what's happening with look ahead time, what's really cool about look ahead time is that if you look at X6 as it is, if you hover over the title bar in any uh, device in Ableton, you can see how many uh, samples of plug and delay compensation that it's creating, right? In its default setting, you can use X6 as a live processor because guess what? It doesn't make any latency at all unless you use linear phase, look ahead time, and so on. Now the advantages of this here are awesome. You can you can use X6 and mix along with it, play instruments. Uh, your MIDI keyboard isn't gonna become latent because you're using something that's making delay, right? So that's really awesome. But you can dial in look ahead time with an audible purpose, okay? So essentially what look ahead time allows a compressor to do is to react sooner to the incoming signal. Right now there's a lot of, because there's no look ahead time here, it's reacting late, okay? However many milliseconds it takes to do its job, it's reacting late, meaning that the spitty, um, punchy uh, transients can come through. And the reason I'm gonna choose to use the drums to illustrate this is, is that it's gonna be really obvious, okay? So let's go ahead and take a listen to this. So that's our really awesome sounding drums, right? With really punchy transients. But if I go to my look ahead time and I turn it on something drastic like 10 milliseconds, take a listen now. I'll switch it back. And then we'll take a look at that peak signal down here. If I turn the look ahead time up, we're hitting around negative six. If I turn it up to off, of course, the compressor can't react as fast, right? Let's go ahead and take a listen to what maybe a different algorithm would sound like. So let's crunch this down a bit. Turn on look ahead time. We can see that we're really controlling the uh, peak signal here, but at the cost of it sounding less punchy, right? So that's why look ahead time exists. If you really wanna make a loud mix, for example, you can turn the look ahead time up a little bit and really just press down any of those transients. The reason look ahead time exists in the first place is so you can control when the compressor does what it's supposed to do, right? Awesome. Okay, and the final thing is, is let's look at the sidechain compression. Maybe we'll set up a sidechain compression situation with the bass. I'll grab a separate multiband X6 for just doing this job alone, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open up the sidechain compression and let's go ahead and make this a uh, default preset. And so I'm gonna go ahead and choose the sidechain input for this from the uh, my drums, and I'm gonna choose just the kick. So now if I say listening to sidechain, I can solo out the bass and actually listen to the kick. And so now all I have to do is click on external, and now I can listen to actually the kick drum coming into this track. Now I can use Ableton to go ahead and crank the gain up here a little bit.
Now you can see four separate bands that are appearing here. Now what's really cool about this is that I can use any one of these four separate bands to duck the bass. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna turn off listening to sidechain. Of course, the kick drum is getting covered up by the bass, right? Okay, cool. So now that I got this set up, I can start to add some compression here. Let's go ahead and do that. And you can see that the compressor is only firing whenever the kick happens, and it's reacting to the frequencies of the incoming kick. So now we really have a lot of control here. So first of all, I'm gonna delete this band up here and I'm gonna to start to pull this down so that just the punch range of the kick is what's being affected on the bass. Now another thing we can do is we can turn attack way down here, right? And then the release down too, so we recover very quickly from the kick. Now I think that this is a very extreme example, so let's go ahead and turn the compression itself down a bit. And so now you can hear that the top end of the bass is barely being affected at all, right? You can just hear the low end of the bass is the thing that's being pulled out whenever the kick drum hits, right? So let's go ahead and listen to everything. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add a key map to my Q key to every single multiband X6. And now we can AB the entire mix with and without these compressors. Now before, now before you judge me, I'm using these compressors in a very aggressive manner so that you can really hear the difference here, okay? So this is gonna be a drastic change, right? So here's our original mix. <laughs> And here's with the compressors. Without. With. Cool, so I've found myself using X6 as my main multiband compressor now. I really enjoy the way that it sounds. Um, I, I, I gotta hand it to the Devious Machine guys for consistently cranking out really awesome tools for people to use. I mean, Infiltrator is <laughs> probably my favorite plugin that's come out in a long time. And this is definitely up there with it. I find myself using X6 all the time just because I can be super creative with what I'm doing. And all I have to do is hit level match and, and leave it on this multi-band gain compensation feature. And I, I'm not gonna deviate too far away, <laughs> pun intended, from my original mix, right? And it's just, I feel free with this, with this multi-band compressor. I feel very confident in my skills with multiband compressors, I've used them for decades. I've always felt like using multiband compression was kind of a chore. And I really just like using this compressor. It, it sounds great. It has really different tonal options. You can interact with each individual band or all of them together. It just puts the fun back in doing this. Again, they're not paying me to say this stuff. I just really believe this stuff. I really am a fan of Devious Machines in general, and I'm really stoked to see what they come out with next. So awesome. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. Much love, everybody. I'll talk at you later. Bye.